Get your decade ahead horoscope now at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous Sagittarius. Welcome to your horoscope for the month of October 2019, looking at life and love. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing month it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And it is as we start this month that we are doing so with the energy of the new moon that took place late last month. Now that for you was an especially uh, social and healing energy. And so you're bringing that into the first few days now, probably active with other people, perhaps involved in professional projects that involve groups as well. But as we navigate into the month, it is gonna be right around the 13th, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet, that we are going to have this month's full moon. This full moon is taking place in a part of the sky for you that has to do with creativity and creative endeavors. It has to do with taking a chance, taking a risk. It has to do with good fortune and turning things around as well. And that is here, that sense of being able to turn things around, that sense of luck truly is very much with you by you being you. Jupiter in your sign is speaking in supreme harmony with this full moon. There is an abundance of opportunity that you are able to generate based on who you are. There's an abundance of creative energy that you have now that you absolutely can channel to your advantage. But we've also got some difficult energies here with this full moon. It does happen. It's all about how you use it, of course. It is gonna be Saturn and Pluto both that will be speaking with this full moon and connections of tension. Now Saturn and Pluto both are moving through a part of the sky that have to do with uh, finances on the one hand, money you earn, money you spend, and it has to do with self-esteem and self-worth. And so it could be that there is something uh, that you do creatively speaking and you are motivated to turn it into a source of financial prosperity. Both of these planets, Saturn and Pluto, have a measure of focus. They have a measure of sacrifice as well. And so it could be that you are asked to give more of yourself in the endeavor of trying to make your creative endeavors that much more financially prosperous. Where it is that you do want to be a little bit careful with this is if it feels as if you're being offered like a fast ticket, you know, jumping over certain steps. It's not about the achievement of a thing, it's about who you become in the process. That's always the point. And so with this, it's not about necessarily you uh, getting to that place, that magical place where you're creatively fulfilled and you're sharing your creativity, which is wonderful, of course, but it is about who you become in the process on the way there, the, the spiritual lessons that you embrace that strengthen you most and ultimately usually are actually what is the point of the dream. The dream isn't always necessarily there or the creativity, the creative vision isn't necessarily always there so that you can fulfill something, get to some destination, but the fulfillment is actually in the pursuit, what you learn about yourself along the way, how it is that as you grow, as you learn, you align with greater love and greater wisdom. And there can be some blurring, some confusion along those lines. And if that does happen, you may find yourself pouring a lot of energy to try and connect the prosperity and the, uh, the creativity in a way that doesn't fuel you, in a way that isn't strengthening you. And it really is your intention, you know, to do your best and surrender the rest your intention to sacrifice, but in ways that actually fuel you, that is going to ensure that you are moving forward. But the other thing with the fast track, right, is you know if somebody says to you, give me a lot of money and we'll be able to skip, skip over certain steps and make amazing things happen for you, that's where you also need to be a little bit careful with this. I think with Saturn, there's an understanding of a work ethic and putting in the time and everything having its own time. And so you might want to listen to that. You might want to honor that when that wisdom starts arising for you and where it is that you are looking at self-esteem and self-worth and healing that 
as part of moving yourself forward, well then those lessons may show up for you at this time. This part of the sky is also connected to children, children you want, children you have with that beautiful Jupiter lunar energy. Uh, fertility can be there, can be high. Um, and it can also be that there is a sense now of positive energy around uh, children as well. However, keep in mind with those more challenging connections that are taking place here, it may be connected to uh, what's happening on the financial front that can be part of this and trying to make that connection happen so that you can do what it is that you are desiring to do for your child. It can be a deeper contemplation in terms of self-esteem and how it is that that can fuel whether it is your desire to have a child or the type of parent that you desire to be. This can be part of the sacred learning for you at this time. But remember, Jupiter's in your sign. This is a very blessed time, a time of a lot of change, but ultimately aligning you with more blessings, more positivity, and that will be very visceral right now. You'll be feeling that sense of your life moving forward in a positive direction, very near and dear to your heart. You have just over two months left of this beautiful energy in your sign, not to be repeated again for another 12 years, so tap into it to your advantage. And it is this full moon that's gonna help you to do just that. Now, as we navigate towards the end of the month, right around the 28th is when we will have this month's new moon. This new moon is happening in the sign just before yours. And this part of the sky speaks to cleansing and healthy closures. It speaks to creating space for the new and the next to find you, which will in a month's time when it is that you have the new moon in your sign. What makes this particular new moon distinct is that it is standing across the sky from Uranus and this part of the sky also being connected to what you don't know and then Uranus being all about awareness, mind level awareness especially, well you can expect yourself to very quickly in surprising moments become aware. Some of this awareness might come out through your interactions with others and sometimes the awareness is about you. It's like very quickly you realize where it is that maybe you've been working against your best interests or working against your stated intentions. Sometimes it's about realizing something deep within your psyche, within your soul and spirit. Sometimes it is an interaction with another person that ends up helping you to feel cleansed in some way, allows that healthy sense of uh, creating space to find you very quickly at that. And I would also add with this energy, this can be a surprising sense of letting go of a bad habit that you didn't even realize you were continuing in some way. There is another consideration here, and that is the fact that at this new moon, it is going to be Mercury that is standing still in the sky, in the same part of the sky, technically going retrograde on Halloween. It is going to be a very powerful time and it is ultimately the fact that we have this essentially stationary Mercury that we call it. Um, well, what this speaks to on the one hand is how it is that conversations and communications of all kinds are gonna be part of this cleansing through having communication with another person running into somebody, very karmically so, you are able to find that sense of inner cleansing that your soul is ready for. But it isn't just about the new moon. November is gonna be a very big Mercury retrograde month. And what that says is this is the beginning of a process for you. That it is gonna be this new moon that sets off a very powerful month of having those realizations within yourself, contemplating something very deeply, cleansing something very deeply. And during this time, especially around this new moon, it is your dreams that can be very vivid as well. In fact, this is the kind of energy that says you go to bed and you wake up feeling like a very different person, realizing that you're starting a new chapter. And then you might spend November trying to make sense of it. And so of course, we'll talk about it once we get there. But just because this is a quiet part of the sky doesn't mean this isn't an eventful time. Doesn't mean that there isn't a whole lot going on. In fact, I would say that this is so important and it is ultimately this new moon and what follows it that is going to help you to take full advantage of the brand new chapters coming up for you once we get to the new moon in your sign towards the end of November. And of course, 
I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. Now, where it comes to matters of love, we're going back to that full moon in the middle of the month because it has to do with matters of heart. It is very likely going to be romance, flirtation, and love. That is one way this energy can also be realized in your life. If you are open to meeting someone new, it is very possible that you do meet somebody, you're getting your flirt on with this full moon, that's for sure, and feeling very excited about the prospects. There's a lot of happiness here and a spirit of romance that is with you. But as part of that journey, you may also be looking at deeper matters of self-esteem and self-worth. And that can be the part of the journey that is truly healing to you. As part of this, there may also be a sense of karmic attractions to other people. And when it is that you feel that pull that much more strongly, that is a signal that the deeper lesson could be there. And I would also add with this energy, sometimes the attractions that we do have could be to people where there are additional complicating factors. That's the best way I could put it. As you just have that little flirtation, you realize that there's other layers going on here. And that could be part of some resistance that shows up for you. And in light of your unique circumstances, you can decide what to do going forward from there. For those of you who are just starting to date someone. If you're just starting to know somebody, this is very powerful energy in that regard. There's a lot of hope with you. There's a lot of happiness here, but at the same time, chances are this is where you'll start to recognize certain limitations or, or, or certain intensity of emotion. With this, what can also happen is there may be a moment, especially around the days of the full moon, where you are looking at what it is that you are hoping for, what it is that you're expecting, where you are in terms of self-love and this experience. Now, it's not always what you think, right? Sometimes it's the case where, and you know, I hear people say things like, you have to love yourself before you can love someone else. I don't think that's the case. I think what can happen is that we attract people and through their love, we learn about self-love that much more deeply. And sometimes we attract people and through their lack of love, we are able to recognize our own worthiness of greater love, and that ends up being the great gift. And either one of these experiences is possible now where it comes to someone that you're just getting to know. Saturn and Pluto both, though, can be very consequential. And what that means is this may be a decisive moment. This may be one of those moments where it's all or nothing where it comes to what you come to realize about this person. And for those of you who are in an established bond, uh, it can be a powerful time as well. There's a desire to know love, a desire to feel a connection, a desire for romance, and there's hope as well with you, which is a beautiful thing. However, at the same time, there may be some practical matters that have to be taken into consideration. For example, there might be something very romantic that the two of you want to do, However, you're wondering about the financial part of it and if it makes sense to have that come together. It could be that there's something really fun that the two of you want to do. However, you have to contemplate more deeply the symbolism of this. And if you have the energy to give, if it makes sense, how you're gonna pace yourself um, in regard to pursuing this very fun experience together. But for all that, remember, Jupiter in your sign is speaking in supreme harmony with this moon. And that can be beautiful for the love that you have to give and the love that you share. What I love about this month for you, well, look, there's a lot here, but I am going to say I love the divine setup. I love how as we're getting to the end of the month, you're moving in a direction of an energy that is more and more cleansing, an energy that is uh, preparing you that much more. It is going to be next month. That is a huge month for you as planets start moving into your sign, mainly Venus, bringing a lot of fun and a lot of love into your life, but also the new moon that's gonna happen next month as well. It really is going to feel like a brand new chapter begins for you then. But right now, it's time to ensure that you've gotten whatever lessons you need. You've understood some deep truths about yourself. You've allowed awareness to come forward where you need as well. And this ultimately will ensure the new chapter that is on the horizon is one that you will love that much more. 
Well, thank you so much for watching. You can get a video like this every week by logging on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. It'll be a great month. Enjoy.